go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Anything presented by Mosher Consulting. I'm your host, Angel Leon, Mosher's Director of Personnel. With us today, we have a very special guest. Yes, we have a co-host today. So if you hear him uh, throughout the episode, as you might, so just ignore him. But he is very cute, I promise. He's four months old. Um, and he likes to make sounds. Uh, so please bear with us <laughs> with that. So uh, we're glad you're with us for episode three of Ask You Anything. And with us today is Mosher's Director of Marketing, Melinda Louder, who joins us today to talk about an interesting concept. Could you keep sucking until you succeed? What does that mean, you ask? That and much more will be answered by Melinda today on Ask You Anything. Melinda, it's great to have you back on Ask You Anything. As you have in the past, you're bringing us a subject that is very intriguing. I guess my first question to you would be, why this subject? Hi, Angel. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting subject, too. Um, I am just intrigued by what I've seen and the average person's need to just be right and by extension to not make mistakes. Um, I started thinking about this a few months ago. Uh, I actually watched a video um, of a guy asking people questions on the street to win prizes. It was like his own little game show. And I really wish I could find this video again. I have searched and searched for it, but it really made an impression on me. So I, I remember it very clearly. So. The first question he asked people was, how many countries are in Africa? And the rules before he let them answer were, uh, you have to get a, you have to answer the question without going over. So you have to be under, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as you guess under the actual number of countries, you would win the prize. So, um, so on hell, like what, what's your guess? It, knowing the rules, like how many countries are in Africa? I, I would say 32. Okay, so technically you're right. The number of countries in Africa is 54. But like knowing the rules though, and, and you did exactly what everybody does. Try to get as close as you can, right? One. One. See, so, so Brian's <laughs> got the idea. If, you know, if we didn't have an, uh, just a drive to be correct, in order to win the prize, all you have to say is one. You know that there's more than one country in Africa, right? But you don't know how many countries are in Africa. But the rules are, you just have to be under it. So if you say one, you win the prize. But we don't want to say one. We want to be right. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want to make a mistake. We want to be as close as we can. And every person this guy interviewed was guessing 30s, 50s, 100s, you know. Why don't we all just say one and be right? And, and I think that feeds into this about wanting to be right, about not making mistakes. And I think the drive to do that gets more as we get older and, and as we feel like we should have the experience to not make mistakes anymore. So kind of really a few months ago, that's where I started getting obsessed with this idea. Interesting. I... I... I, I'm, first of all, I mean, the guess really was a guess. I, I didn't think that would be the, the right answer. So that's, that's good. But that's an interesting take on, on that. So I guess kind of like a segue to this, why are mistakes important? Because that game presents itself to be a really interesting, a really interesting game, really, it, it, because you're still getting the prize as long as you don't go over. But I would have never guessed there were 54 countries in Africa. Yeah, but you know, it, but then you ask yourself, why, why did you guess 34? I mean, you know, knowing the rules, it, it, I think it's because we, we all do want to be right. And we want to be as close as we can to it, even if it doesn't matter, even if it doesn't matter. This is a, something we have to address in our nature as people. And that affects our work. It affects as students, what we do in school. And then, you know, when you're wrong, I mean, you know, when I told you 54, I mean, you probably were like, okay, I was pretty close. 34 is pretty close. At least I felt I did. good. I felt good. Yeah. yeah I felt good. At least I wasn't way off. Right. But, you know, I think that we've got to start thinking about it's okay that you don't know every fact, right? It's okay that you don't know how many were there. And, you know, sometimes it's okay that I say one and that that 
meet the requirements. Yeah, interesting because I, I you're right. We always want to be right. Even when we know we're close to the answer, we still want to say, I was so close. I, I felt like I, I had it. And so I was closer than you. I was closer than the person next to me. I was right, closer than right. that guy. Yeah, and even right now, I'm wondering how long I'm going to remember there are 54 countries in Africa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's about our need to, to be right and by extension, not make mistakes. Yeah, so, so then why are mistakes important? Why, why, why are they important? Like in education, when you think about education, especially even not just education, but in science, the importance of mistakes, I feel like has always been noted. Like, um, like there was a, a study uh, by Janet Metcalf called Errorful Learning. And she found, this was in 2017, she found out that students who were allowed to make mistakes and she called it errorful learning. If those were followed up with corrective feedback, the students excelled and did very well, learning their own lessons from the mistakes and being guided in the right way. It really, it frees us up. Being free to make errors frees us up for innovation because you're not gonna innovate unless you're trying new things and figuring things out. And some of those things are gonna be mistakes. They're gonna be wrong. You can't be afraid of doing that. And you know, let's not forget either that some of the most important things that have happened in our society, the most important inventions are the product of mistakes. You know, the invention of penicillin was a mistake. He went on vacation and when he came back, his lab uh, little trays were uh, corrupted. You know, what would we have done if he had just thrown them away and not go, you know, learned from that mistake and looked at why they were corrupted and tried to figure out that, you know, how long would it have taken us then to develop penicillin, which has saved so many lives and is the product of a mistake. You brought up a lot of interesting points because, I mean, the guesswork that comes from the question that you asked, what happens if he would have thrown away those bottles? What, what would have happened if he would have done that? And so basically you don't make that discovery. Yeah, I mean, you know, he could have said, oh, I don't want anybody to know that I've messed up all of all this entire experiment. I, I'm just going to restart it. Nobody will know. But, you know, instead he's like, why? Why is this happening? And, and you know, obviously we all know the result of it. So. Yeah. So that brings up a point about how we often hear the phrase, you, you learn from your mistakes. And I think that phrase has been has probably been used by every parent in history. We we say it to our childrens every day. We're oftentimes thinking about, oh, I, I used to I I made this mistake when I was your age. But what does that mean for businesses? What does that mean for somebody who is in a business setting that is, you know, makes a mistake? Yeah. When uh when mistakes happen at work, I mean, a lot of times we feel like they hired us, we are presenting ourselves as experts we shouldn't be making mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what happens is when a mistake does happen, which is going to happen, people seize up. They, they feel anxiety uh, about what this perceived failure says about them, about security with their job. It's really a stressful situation, but what we need to think about is what if we assessed mistakes with a growth mindset, right? Rather than being afraid, we can examine the situation and take away the lessons. So um, learning from mistakes at work might look like discovering how to better plan for the unexpected. So, you know, I made this mistake because I wasn't prepared for these situations that could happen. It could just involve a personal change. Like I need to become more detail oriented. I need to work on that. It could be about developing resiliency to something or thinking of a new solution, thinking out of the box, going back to the drawing board. But, you know, basically, instead of focusing on the mistake, focusing on what can be learned, how you can turn that into a growing experience. Mistakes can make us better people in our jobs and in our life if we give it the room to let that happen. It's reminding me of, I think, two different quotes that are at least attributed to Thomas Edison. I don't know if he actually said either of them, but one was like, uh, I didn't fail to make a light bulb a thousand times. The light bulb 
was a thousand step process. You know, yeah. the invention of the light, it was a thousand step process to invent the light bulb or um, I didn't fail, ten, the other one was, I, I, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I found 10,000 ways to not do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's really about that mindset about um, learning from it. Just saying you're, you're not afraid. If he had been afraid to fail, right? He would have never gotten there because there were so many failures, so many mistakes. Uh, and, and you just have to use it as a learning curve. You just have to keep moving and just implement that failure in a different way so it doesn't happen again. So um, for those of you who don't know, we have we actually have a blog about this topic in, on our website, mojoit.com. And there's an interesting thing that I'm going to ask Melinda now, because I think that is very key to what we're talking about. What is a cultural of failure? Yeah, so it seems wrong, right? <laughs> My mm -hmm. company has a culture of failure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's what I when I was reading the blog, I was like, wait a second, is this actually a thing? But it is, it's actually a thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, in the end, I, I feel like this is just my opinion, you're not going to innovate unless you you cultivate a culture of failure a culture that mm -hmm. tolerates mistakes, and missteps, as long as they're not negligent. Now, and we should make that um, we should make that distinction. There's a difference between trying something purposefully and it not it not succeeding and gross negligence or um, you know something like that. Maliciousness. Yeah. Maliciousness, even yes. Yeah, you obviously have to draw that distinction. But really, a culture of failure is about developing a workplace culture that accepts mistakes and accepts that they happen and that they are learning opportunities. Or at the very least, you don't create a culture that punishes employees for making an honest mistake or an honest try. Because if you do that, people are gonna stop coming to you with ideas. They're not gonna have fresh innovative ideas that they share because they'll be afraid. Yeah, that's, um, and, and that's very key because if you lose that trust, because you, you're not used to seeing other people, you know, or yourself fail, but you're not, willing to then take a hit and kind of just pick yourself back up and just continue moving on. That's hard. And especially in business, because if something fails, you know, everybody around you looks, could look at you like, Oh, dude, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like at Mosher, I lead our marketing team and uh, we're kind of a small scrappy group. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have a five person team that supports a 300 person company. Uh, in all of their marketing needs. So um, we do a lot of things. We produce this podcast every week. We write a weekly blog and we produce all of the materials that the sales and that the company needs. So um, we have projects coming at us 24 seven. We have short timelines, high expectations. So personally, I try to make sure my people know mistakes are okay. It's okay if we make a mistake. We're not going to come down on you. You're not going to be punished, especially for suggesting something that we try, even if it doesn't work. We have to move so quickly that I don't want them to stress out about a mistake because it's going to happen. Like it's literally going to happen. We're going to put out a misspelling. We're going to have a blip in something uh, that we can't re-record, but it's okay. As long as it's an honest effort mm -hmm. and we're trying new things, we're all right. And I think that that's the kind of culture you have to cultivate. And I think not all people in leadership positions think this way. Yeah. Um, it's a culture of graceful failure and recovery. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's about. Yeah, recovery, a key word right there. Um, not a lot of people think about failure and then recovering from that and then just moving, moving on, moving forward. Yeah. And uh, I think we should normalize working in a place that accepts these things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, organizations should have leaders who illustrate what making a mistake and successfully recovering from it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, they should be able to try new things. To own, the leaders should own up to mistakes, not try to, to cover those up and um, talk about what they learned from them. Uh, and then course correct. You know, mm -hmm. I've seen companies build a plan and, and follow that plan into the ground, even if it's not working, because that's the plan. And I, I think you have to be willing to pivot, to, to look at the little parts of it that aren't working 
and make, you know, fail fast type of changes, mm -hmm. you know, and correct, not just cancel, but correct th things and move things where they need to be. If we're okay with failure, there's got to be a way that we could avoid it too. I don't really think we can avoid it. And, and I don't really know if we want to. I mm -hmm. mean, yes, okay. avoid gross negligence, avoid purposeful neglect of right. duties, but you can't avoid all mistakes. Mm -hmm. So I have this little clip of a newspaper that I'm going to show you guys. Our, our people on, online won't be able to see it, but I clipped this out of the newspaper years ago. <laughs> it was actually, so this is going to date me. It was actually the Sunday paper and the parade magazine that comes in the Sunday paper. It was an article mm -hmm. about success years and years ago. And there's several things on here on this little clip that I, <laughs> that I clipped out. But the most meaningful to me, and the reason this has been hanging by my desk for 20 years, <laughs> is it says, every now and then, no matter how careful you try to be, you're bound to do something unbelievably stupid. <laughs> and it just, <laughs> yeah, I love it. it. And at the time I clipped it out and it freed me. I was like, I don't have to sit here and worry about right. making one mistake and it ending my life. I feel like that freed me to just not worry about it. It's going to happen to everybody. And the sooner you accept that, the more free you're going to be. Yeah, perfection might not be completely achievable, but it can you you can definitely get there with making the mistakes that come along the way because those mis mistakes do provide some value, which takes me to my final question. And we've briefly touched on this, but what is the value of making mistakes? I think that mistakes make us better people if we let them. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some people who who are going to make mistakes it's not going to make them a better person. They're not going to accept it. They're not going to try to learn from it and think about it. But I think if you let it, you can learn something about yourself or about your processes. You can learn and grow. You can figure stuff out. So actually, and one more story, my husband is a system engineer and he used to work on a huge computer system. And whenever one of the other system engineers would accidentally take down a live production server, they had a little traveling trophy they would give that person. <laughs> it's a little bomb <laughs> with a little fuse coming out the top when you take down a live production server. But, you know, why, it, it was a little bit of a joke, but right. it was also to recognize it. And I was like, why would you, why would you do this other than a joke? And it, it's because he said, well, if they're not taking it down every now and then, they're not doing it. They're afraid to go mm -hmm. in there and do stuff to the server. And you have to do stuff to servers. You have to update them. You have to patch them. You have to watch them. You have to be sure they're not. He, they would hire some people who were so afraid of taking it down. They wouldn't touch it. They would just mm -hmm. let it run. And eventually it's going to go down on it. It will take like itself that. down in that instance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so he at least wanted to hire people who weren't afraid, who would go in there and watch it and be in the system and log into the system and see what's going on. And at least if you're in there, yeah, every now and then you're going to make a mistake, you know, but it's an honorable mistake and, <laughs> and they just kind of wanted to celebrate it. So. Yeah. It's an honorable mistake. It's an honorable trophy. You, you got, <laughs> you've got to, you got to keep it. And that, you know, and I see the point. I see the point. It definitely signifies that a mistake was done, but that a learning occurred as well. Um, yep. Something happened that somebody learned their, not, I don't want to use the term learn their lesson, but they learn a valuable, from a from an instance, they learn a valuable uh, lesson. So with that, we'd like to thank Melinda Lauder for joining us this week to talk about why making mistakes will be valuable for your business. Melinda, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening in to this week's edition of Ask Anything presented by Mosher Consulting. We'll be back next week with another episode, continuing to dive deeper with our resident experts and what they're currently working on. If you have an idea or a topic you'd like us to explore, please reach out to us through our social media channels. In the meantime, please remember to give us a rating and subscribe to our feed wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, don't be afraid to make mistakes. <sighs> Sorry. Until then, don't be afraid to make mistakes because in the end, mistakes will end up making you better. So long, everybody.